so welcome back to my channel. So today, um, we're not going to do traveling with twins. We're not going anywhere. Oh my gosh, it's so windy outside. It is crazy. So today, I, I, we're going to actually talk about something different. I'm going to talk about uh, my being pregnant and delivery story in Japan. And I had a few people ask me about my experience having babies in Japan, being pregnant in Japan, all that. So. I decided to make a video about it. It's easier and I only have to tell it once. So, I made a list like I didn't live through the experience. So, my twins are um, 10 months as of a couple days ago. And it is crazy thinking back to like more than a year ago I found out I was pregnant. I found out I was pregnant in August. So by then they were already almost two months cooking. So I took a pregnancy test in early August and it said that I was pregnant so then I went to um, just the closest ladies clinic which was maybe like a five minute bike ride by then I was I didn't have a car I was biking the doctor spoke so so English he could tell me like a couple things most of it was in Japanese Roz was there to translate things I didn't know and the doctor was like okay let's go back and you know check your belly do an ultrasound and he was like oh yeah look there's two little dark spots and I was like y yes <laughs> and he was like yeah you you're having twins I, I remember my eyes got so big I looked at Raj I was like what <laughs> and Raj had like a big smile on his face and I was like oh my god I've always wanted twins literally I want to be a twin I always wanted to be twin I was always fascinated with twins so I was so excited that I was having twins but I was also like uh, I'm in Japan <laughs> I'm gonna have twins I didn't notice those two months before I found out I was pregnant that I had motion sickness or not motion sickness morning sickness but after I found out I was pregnant I don't know it was because I knew I was pregnant then morning sickness just like went through the roof blueberries made me throw up and I love blueberries I would make blueberry smoothies and within the 30 minutes I would throw up maybe a couple months not a couple months maybe a couple weeks after I found I was pregnant I started bleeding you know I was terrified so I went back to that doctor it was a weekend so the clinic was closed but they could admit you into the clinic to stay overnight so we get there and the nurse is like you have to stay here overnight because the doctor is on vacation or holiday or whatever and this is a really small clinic so he's the only doctor it's not like oh can you call like the other doctor he's the only one so if he's on vacation then no one's there to check you none of the nurses can do anything but like pat you on the back and like give you medicine if you need to one of the nurses the day nurses she, she comes up to us and she's like it's funny because she said it with a smile she's like I've never seen this doctor ever deliver twins before and this is a pretty old doctor and she was like middle age too and she said she was there for like a she's been at that clinic for a while and that kind of scared me because uh. in, in Japan they do c-sections when you have twins or just what they do and when she told me that I was like uh, <laughs> I don't want someone to cut me open I've never done it before so that kind of scared me also it scared me because I kept bleeding and the nurses were like yeah the doctor's on vacation and he'll be here like the next day so just keep bleeding and blah. so Raj and I told our fears to the nurses our concern to the nurse this is the night nurse now and then she called the doctor and I guess he came from wherever he was having vacation from I was like yeah I think maybe because you don't trust the nurses the, literally the night nurse didn't tell me anything because you don't trust the nurses I think you should probably go to a bigger clinic and in my mind I was like okay because obviously you've never had delivered twins before so bye so we went to a bigger clinic which was a hundred times better because first of all the doctor that we had spoke English like fluently but after we went to the hospital we found out that we actually need to register their, that we're having a baby so we went to the city hall and at the city hall they give you register that you're having a baby they give you a coupon book because uh, having a baby is not covered under health insurance in Japan there's national health insurance but being pregnant is not an illness <laughs> so they don't cover that they give you coupons encourage moms to still get checkups even though it's not covered under the national health insurance by by now I'm like I don't know four months pregnant or so and every time I go to the doctor, the, the hospital, they checked my pee, 
my weight, my blood pressure, and then I'll always have an ultrasound and they'll show me like the babies and like they're the size of this and they look good and every once in a while I'll get a blood test. Every once in a while I'll talk to the midwives and talk about birthing plans, which in Japan, the birthing plan is whatever they say the birthing plan is. There's no like, oh, actually I want to do this. No, they just tell you the birthing plan and then you're like, okay. <laughs> so finding out about the baby's gender, um, I think it was like around six or seven months. We always knew Nehemiah was a boy, like from like seven months on or six months on because he was in the right position with head down, butt up. So we could tell he was, he was at the top. But Zoe, her butt, like she was breached, I guess it was called, like her butt is down, her head's up. So her butt was like in the darkness of my body where they couldn't get like the ultrasound to. Like they would get to like maybe a butt cheek and like once they got bigger, they stopped moving around. So it was just, we were never going to be able to tell until the day they were delivered. Now, maybe I'm seven months pregnant. No, eight, seven, eight, uh, it's February. February, I decided to take my maternity leave in Japan. Before the baby is due, you get, you know, time off. And it depends on if you're having uh, one baby or multiples. And for twins, you get eight, no, six weeks, so a month and a half. I decided to just take a month off because what am I going to do in the house for a month and a half? I decided to just take off in February. Uh, also, uh, for maternity leave and then after the baby's born, that maternity leave, you only get paid 60% of your salary and you only get that money after you come back from work. So in February, I just like, this is like at the end of February, I just, you know, prepared the house, bought a whole bunch of stuff for the babies. I also had a baby shower. So I invited a lot of my English teaching friends. Now we're getting close to delivery. The doctor wanted me to be admitted into the hospital two or three weeks before my due date. And I was concerned about pr price and how much it was going to cost in Japan because, again, having a baby is not a s illness, so it's not covered by the national health insurance. So I was scared. I was like, two, three weeks, I can't do that. I don't have enough money for a hospital bed for that much. Um, found out that because it's not covered by the national health insurance, it's up to the prefecture to like give gifts, I guess. I don't. But anyways, I found out there's gift money. There's pregnancy gift money. You have a baby, you get this gift money. I had a large amount of money that I had towards having C-section, staying in the hospital, doctor's fees, baby fees, or whatever. I had this huge chunk of money. And I don't know how much C-sections cost, but anyway. I decided that two, three weeks was too much. And I asked, can I just come in like a week before the babies are due because I don't speak that much Japanese. I don't want to be stuck in the hospital for two, three weeks. Uh, so the doctor was fine with that. He's like, when I did go to the hospital and I found out the babies actually were trying to come out. So good that I did come in that that week and didn't like try to push it to like a couple of days before. Cause I'm like 37 or almost 30, I'm 36 weeks. So the doctor of course wants to keep them in until I'm 37 weeks. He hooked me up to IV and I had to walk around the whole hospital with that you know, the IV and the pole, and I can only take a shower every other day. In the hospital that week I was there, they don't have Wi-Fi. And I was like, I can't survive in this hospital for a week without Wi-Fi. So I rented one of those pocket Wi-Fis, and I had a blast. Because I watch YouTube, I downloaded um, The Amazing Race, which I'm obsessed with, and I want to be on The Amazing Race. After being in the hospital for a week and watching about, like, five seasons of The Amazing Race, I want to be on that show. And then Raj would come and visit me uh, every day. He couldn't visit during the visiting hours because he had work then. So we asked the doctor and the doctor let him visit like in the morning time. And I would be sad every time he left because I was like, I'm going to be here by myself. <laughs> yeah, so um, that is not the end of the story. But I realized while I'm editing the video, it's going to be like really long. So this is be part one. So come back for part two for the aftermath. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe so you can watch more episodes of Traveling with Twins and also any other bonus video that I might film. And also you can follow me on Instagram and on Snapchat so you can see daily updates of what we're doing when we're not traveling. And I will see you later.